In today's video, we are going to be talking about the most beloved and the most profitable geeky franchises of all time. Right here, right now, coming at you. Hello to all of my fans of geeky businesses. Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. In the past, being a geek was something that people generally tried to shy away from. People often did not admit that they were interested in comic books. It was that dirty little secret. But in recent years, being a geek has become popular. It's become cool. And the profit margins of the world's most valuable geeky companies definitely show it. So today, we're doing a countdown of the top 15 most profitable geeky franchises of all time. And the franchise in the number one spot is definitely not who you think. So let's jump right into this list, starting with our franchise in the number 15 spot, and that is Magic the Gathering. Yes, the card game Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering is, Magic the Gathering is a card game that launched in the early 1990s and just exploded in popularity. Over the years, numerous companies have attempted to replicate the success of Magic the Gathering, but more often than not, they have failed. Since its launch in 1993, Magic the Gathering is estimated to have profited over $4.02 billion, and that value is expected to increase as uh, Magic the Gathering is becoming more mainstream, especially with their game, Magic Arena. It's become very, very popular. People who formerly weren't even into card games are now starting to get into Magic just by playing the game online. In our number 14 spot is the Legend of Zelda franchise. Legend of Zelda first launched in 1986 for the Nintendo Entertainment System and was, was created by Shigeru Miyamoto. And uh, since its launch in 1986, Zelda has become one of the most beloved and one of the most popular video game franchises of all time. Since its launch in the mid 1980s, the Legend of Zelda franchise is estimated to have profited over $4.04 billion. Now the main source of The Legend of Zelda's revenue is obviously video games, but over the years there's been other Legend of Zelda content such as manga, which I actually highly recommend The Legend of Zelda manga quite entertaining. If you're interested in picking up The Legend of Zelda manga, the link is in the description. In our number 13 spot we have the Assassin's Creed franchise. Assassin's Creed first launched in 2007 with the game of the same name, Assassin's Creed, and it told the legend of Altair. Now I'm telling you, the first Assassin's Creed game was not the greatest. Uh, it definitely had its moments, but it was kind of repetitive and really did not uh, make me want to keep going back to the game because it just kind of got boring after a while. Now we all know that Assassin's Creed's popularity exploded with the sequel, which was Assassin's Creed number two, featuring the Playboy Smartmouth Ezio Auditore. To this day, Ezio Auditore has appeared in more Assassin's Creed games than any other Assassin's Creed character. And thanks to the popularity of the franchise, Assassin's Creed has pulled in an estimated $4.31 billion. To this day, Assassin's Creed games continue to be made and their most recent release was Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Game of Thrones, also known as A Song of Ice and Fire. This is a franchise that I'm sure most people were expecting to have appeared on this list. Game of Thrones was actually a novel that uh, was written by George R.R. R. Martin. It was published in 1996. Following the first novel, George R.R. R. Martin published A Clash of Kings, A Storm of Swords, A Feast for Crows, and A Dance with Dragons. But the series really did not explode in popularity until the very extremely popular HBO show called Game of Thrones that launched in 2011. Since 1996, Game of Thrones is estimated to have garnered $5.81 billion. This is actually a franchise that I could definitely see uh, tapering off in popularity. I think it already kind of has tapered off in popularity since uh, the show ended. And the show ended on a less than favorable note for most fans of the franchise. George R.R. R. Martin also has yet to publish his much awaited novel, The Winds of Winter, and we are going on 10 years since George R.R. R. Martin 
last released an installment in the Song of Ice and Fire series. And after Winds of Winter, he still has another book to publish, A Dream of Spring. So will he ever get it finished? I don't know. Let's hope he does. The X-Men franchise. And the X-Men first appeared in a series of comic books that were published by Marvel Comics. When f the X-Men first appeared uh, in the pages of Marvel Comics, they actually weren't really that popular. They actually started becoming more popular once a writer named Chris Claremont took over the writing duties of the series. With Chris Claremont and numerous talented artists who worked on the book, X-Men just exploded in popularity. It's actually one of the hottest books of the 1980s and the 1990s, but X-Men became very, very profitable in the late 90s, actually early 2000s, I believe it was, with the first X-Men movie. The first X-Men movie was actually uh, a milestone for uh, superhero movies to begin with because X-Men constitutes one of the first superhero movies ever made by Marvel. Now, yes, Marvel did have the Blade franchise from 1998, but most people didn't even really know that Blade was associated with Marvel. But X-Men, X-Men, that, that without a doubt was uh, Marvel property. And when the X-Men movies came out, they were extremely popular and people just couldn't get enough of them. Since 1963, the X-Men franchise is estimated to have earned $7.78 billion, somewhere around that figure. Next up, we have the Superman franchise, and I'm not going to lie, I actually thought this was going to be a franchise that was going to be a little bit higher up in the list, but nevertheless, here we are with uh, the Superman franchise. Superman uh, first appeared in Action Comics number one from 1938, and since his first appearance, is estimated to have earned $11.1 .1 billion. Now, Superman's main area of revenue has been comic books in the past, but since the 1970s, Superman has also taken flight on the screens with the uh, much beloved and uh, classic Christopher Reeve Superman movies and the Superman movies featuring Henry Cavill. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is a franchise that I definitely expected to appear on this list, and I'm also probably most impressed with this franchise because Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has only been around since 1984. And since 1984, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is estimated to have earned around $14.6 billion. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles started off as a small independent comic printed in black and white and had a very, very low print run. And I'm sure Eastman and Layer, the uh, creators of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic book, had no idea and never even could imagine that their idea would be this valuable and this profitable. The main area of revenue for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has been comic books, movies, video games, and of course, merchandise and toys. The Avengers. The Avengers first appeared in Avengers number one in 1963, and they were a superhero team that constituted many of Marvel Comics's then popular superhero characters. Now, the Avengers has really exploded in popularity since the huge, huge Avengers movie that debuted in 2012. And since 2012, the Avengers have appeared in numerous, numerous movies. Uh, huge blockbuster hits have really broken a lot of box office records. Main area of revenue for Avengers likely is the, the movies. They also profit in the areas of comic books and merchandise. Lord of the Rings. Now, Lord of the Rings is a franchise that first appeared in a series of novels by J.R.R. Tolkien uh, that were first published in 1937. Now, these are beloved as classic fantasy books and fantasy books from the modern era that will be read and cherished forever. The Lord of the Rings really, of course, exploded in popularity when their movies were released. And since 1937, with novels and movies and merchandise, Lord of the Rings is estimated to have earned $19.9 .9 billion. Our next franchise is another one that really has me impressed, and that is the Dragon Ball franchise. Dragon Ball uh, first was published in the Weekly Shonen Jump magazine in Japan in 1984. The Dragon Ball franchise was created by Akira Toriyama, and since 1984, this franchise is estimated to have earned $27 billion. $27 billion since 1984. That is huge. Dragon Ball to this day is a pop cultural icon, and Dragon Ball really has become the face of manga. Are you ready now? to witness a power not seen for thousands of years? And now 
now we get to our top five and in our number five spot is a franchise that I actually thought would have been in the top three or a little bit higher up in the list, but uh, nevertheless, it's in spot number five. And that is the Batman franchise. Uh, Batman first appeared in Detective Comics in 1939. And since 1939, Batman has earned an estimated $28 billion. Batman is one of the most popular superheroes and people go crazy not only over his comic books, but over his merchandise, a series of stellar, awesome, awesome video games and movies to this day that are classics. And I'm thinking particularly of Batman 1989, Batman Returns from 1992, maybe Batman Forever, definitely not Batman and Robin, but Batman Begins and the whole Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy. I really can't wait to see what comes next for Batman. And in our number four spot, another surprise for me is Spider-Man. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I actually thought that Batman uh, was going to have been in the number four spot. And Batman, I thought, was going to be the franchise that has pulled in more than Spider-Man, not just due to popularity, but also due to the fact that Batman has been around for longer than Spider-Man. But Nevertheless, here I am and I stand corrected. Spider-Man first appeared in 1962 in Amazing Fantasy number 15. And Spider-Man's main source of revenue has been obviously in comic books, but also in merchandise, toys. Since 1962, it is estimated that Spider-Man has earned $29 billion in revenue. Now, when it comes down to the question, who is the more popular superhero, Batman or Spider-Man? It's been an argument that people have been having for years. I think this is probably going to be the argument breaker. I think just based on these figures and who has made more money, I think we might have to say that Spider-Man is the more popular of the two. But Batman is very, very close behind. And I definitely think that Batman fans are a little bit more passionate about uh, their character more so than Spider-Man. In our number three spot is the Mario franchise. I definitely expected Mario to be in the top 15, but I didn't think that Mario was going to be this high up. Mario first appeared in video games published by Nintendo in 1981. I actually think his first appearance was in that Donkey Kong uh, arcade game. I'm not much of a video game historian, but I'm pretty sure he first appeared in the uh, Donkey Kong uh, arcade game. And Mario to this day is probably what we consider to be the face of video games. When people think video games, probably one of the first video game they will think of is anything that has to do with Mario. Mario was a character that was created by Shigeru Miyamoto, uh, the same creator of uh, the Legend of Zelda franchise. And since Mario's creation is estimated that this franchise has earned $38 billion. That's pretty huge because most of Mario's revenue comes from video games, but there is also Super Mario merchandise, and there was a pathetic attempt at a Mario movie. Does anyone remember this, huh? And in our number two spot, this is probably the biggest surprise on this whole list. And our number two spot is Star Wars. I'm not gonna lie, I definitely expected Star Wars to be in the number one spot. Star Wars is one of the, hands down, one of the most valuable intellectual properties on the planet. It's really uncanny to think that Star Wars has only been around since 1977, and since 1977, this franchise has earned an estimated $70 billion. That is a huge jump from our number three spot, which was about $38 billion. Just, just crazy. Now, Star Wars is mostly, of course, known for their movies, but also Star Wars makes a lot with video games, some really awesome video games, novels, comic books, merchandise, toys, lunch boxes, you name it, there's probably something Star Wars related to it. I was at the store the other day and I even found a Star Wars pancake mold. Now, despite people's thoughts that the Star Wars franchise is dead since Disney took over, I would respectfully disagree just based on these numbers. Star Wars isn't going anywhere. It may ebb and flow in popularity, but Star Wars is always going to be there and is always going to be a valuable intellectual property. Impressive. The most impressive. And here we are finally to the number one spot in our number one spot for the most valuable geeky franchise on the planet is huge surprise to me pokemon i definitely definitely expected this franchise to be on the list the fact that it is number one uh just blew me away and the figure for the amount of money that this company has made since pokemon first appeared in 1996 is just amazing 
Now, Pokemon is a franchise that launched with their first video game in 1996. Everyone knows these video games. They are the Pokemon Red and Blue video games that were released for the original Game Boy. When Pokemon became very, very popular in North America, more games were made, trading card games were made, and it's actually really amazing because the Pokemon trading card game is a huge competitor to Magic and has definitely stood the test of time. As I mentioned earlier, Magic the Gathering is a card game that is known as the premier collectible card game and most other imitations of Magic have failed, but Pokemon has endured the test of time. The Pokemon trading card game was originally published by the same company that makes the Magic cards, that is Wizards of the Coast, but now the Pokemon company has decided to go with a different producer for their cards. Now, since 1996, the Pokemon company has made an estimated $100 billion, $100 billion from video games, card games, merchandise, toys, you name it. Again, there's probably something Pokemon related to it. So that about does it for our video today. Really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Were there any surprises on this list for you? Where are the top five, what you expected? Are there any other franchises that you thought would appear on this list that did not? Let me know in the comments. Always love hearing from you. And until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode. Now get out of here!